Hey, what's up everyone? Vegetarian Zombie here again, and I want to welcome you back to HTML for Twine Developers. In this episode, we're going to be diving a little deeper into block content. In the last video, I talked about the differences between inline content and block content, and why that was somewhat important. It was a little theoretical. In this episode, we're going to be seeing how this affects you in a practical level. Okay, let's just dive into it. And to do that, we're gonna do a little bit of review. If you remember, the difference between block content and inline content is that a block content is a way of, it basically creates a carriage return after your actual content. Whereas inline content, you can just put it within the actual paragraph or any other sort of text that you're working on such as italics or bold or so forth, whereas block content, you would use it for paragraphs or for sections or headers and footers. The question is, why would you want to use block content? And you would simply do this to group related content. You would assign that as a block content tag, and that tag will tell you what that content really means, meaning if you take a bunch of related text and you put it inside a header, you would know that is the header of a document. If you put it within the section, it would be part of the section of that document. Same as if you use the article tag and you put in a whole bunch of content within that, you'd realize that that content is related to an article. We use tags to semantically give meaning to the content in our documents. That's nice and all, but how does this affect Twine? Well, in Twine, we don't need to worry about organizing our content in any semantic manner. We're telling stories. In such regards, most of the block tags you don't really need to worry about. The only one that will affect you in on a day-to-day -day basis is the div tag. The div tag is your sort of junk drawer of block content tags. It really means anything. It's what, what meaning you want to apply to it. Since we're basically creating, organizing our content for effect after, as opposed to organizing it for meaning, we don't need to worry about the meanings of the div tag. We'll just use it as a regular block tag and don't think about anything else about it. Okay, let's see this in action. Here we have our simple HTML file and we have this, this space for rent. What I may want to do is organize this content in a div tag, and then maybe have another call, maybe some other information or other content in another div tag. And I'll do that so then I could then lay them out using CSS. And I'll, we'll be covering CSS a little bit later. But let's start with our div. I'm gonna, just gonna call this div like so, and I'm gonna do an opening and a closing. And we'll just put here, we'll put this space for rent right here, like so. And we'll delete this comment. And then I'm going to create another div, like so, and I'm going to put this content in here. Now I'll save, and I want you to imagine what this is going to look like. Okay, do you have an idea of how this is going to look? Okay, let's reload. And here we have, we have this space for rent, we have a carriage return after that, and we have hello world. Again, the div tags don't necessarily mean anything. It's the meaning we apply to it. But it's really useful, again, for styling. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up my developer tools. I'm going to click View, Developer, and I'm going to put it open up developer tools like so. And you'll see we get this information. You'll see this toolbar down here, and we can examine our HTML document. You see we have our div tag here, and then we have our other div tag here. Well, I can then start styling this. I can give this a width of, say, 200 pixels. And I can give it a background color of, let's give this red. And now we can see how this, and now we can see how this looks visually. I'll do the same for the other, except I'll give this a width of, say, 400 pixels and a background color of green. And then what I can do is actually do something that is known as floating, which is a way of aligning, having these two things be on the same line. For instance, I can take this div here and I can use float left. And I'll be talking about this in the CSS 
portion. But now you can see that these two items are now side by side to each other. And then as I add more and more content, I'm now working in a columned based layout. And this is how we can organize things within our Twine stories to ultimately display things in a visual way to our, our players. We can have one column be maybe switches or toggles or even part of your Twine content, have another column be places, maybe an image or so forth. By thinking and understanding how content works in HTML, you'll understand how you can start applying it to create some really dynamic stories.